Hey guys, welcome back to the 4 x 2 Wagon Family Garage and today we're going to be replacing the rear shocks on my dad's 1980 C3 Corvette. Now I already got all the socks replaced except for the driver's side rear and I thought well you know let me just pause and make a quick video for you guys. So this particular project shouldn't take you no more than 15 minutes. It's so simple so I hope that this video will be helpful if you guys are changing out the shocks on your C3. Alright so let's get started. Okay, and just like any vehicle you work under, uh, you want to make sure you put a jack stamp underneath all your rigs. Never rely on your hydraulic garage jack. Okay, and you can release the hydraulic jack down. Okay, so this is where the rocker panel is, and I got my hydraulic jack right there. Then I also got my hydraulic jack slash stand right underneath this rear frame that goes all the way across, and that's where I put my center jack stand. Okay, so now we got the Corvette pretty secured, and it's not going nowhere. All right, so what I want to show you guys is uh, a little bit off topic here, but while I got the wheel off, I want to show you guys what I've had done and I wish I would have known this so I went into um, to this to uh, you know gear specialist to have the rear um, bearings pressed in when they got in here the trilling arm and the knuckle everything was rusted on so, so tight uh, they soaked the bolts for two days and they just couldn't get it off so uh, this job would have cost me around uh, around eight hundred to thousand dollars for both sides uh, in the rear, but it ended up costing me almost two thousand dollars because one I didn't want to deal with it. But if I would have known that you could buy this whole assembly, it's called a it's, I think it's called a trailing arm assembly, which is about six hundred and thirty dollars for each side. And what that includes is this whole trailing arm, this rotor, new dust shield. You get the brand new knuckle and all the bushings and everything that you need that, to mount your brake and whatever, right? So this whole kit, you can just do in your garage. It's basically, it's a bolt-on kit and it's pretty simple. It, um, it, you know, you, you could have saved yourself about $800 in labor if you just did this yourself. And if I would have known that, I would have done it. But because I'm not familiar with Corvettes, well, now I know. So, uh, but because this thing is warranted for, for life, I shouldn't have to worry about it. my dad shouldn't have to worry about this um, ever. But anyway, just want to kind of bring that up, you know, bring this to your attention. If you guys want to do this, it's totally doable. And I'll leave all the links down below to this whole trilling arm assembly. All right, now on with the shocks. Okay, so the lower shock, the nut, this is a 19 millimeter, and upper one is 15. So I had to put one on and this is also missing a lock wash or yeah lock washer. Okay, that's a bummer. Okay, and the upper bolt here is a 16 millimeter on the bolt and then it's a 17 millimeter uh, on the nut on the back side. Let me spin the bolt out. There we go. There it comes. Ah, there's a sleeve right here that was keeping it from coming out. Okay, so the, there you go. KYB gas shock absorber. And these were, I want to say, like around um, $25 each. And these things have a lifetime warranty. Uh, but you can also buy this online on Amazon, and I'll leave all the links down below. Okay, so this is the old shock on my on this side here and this is the new shock and you can see the shock is pretty much sh well shot if i compress both of these shocks right here it should expand and as you can see the spectrum one is no longer expanding in fact what i should have done is i should have taken this because i know this is a o'reilly shock part i should have just taken this down to o'reilly and warranty this because i know they have a lifetime warranty on these uh, shocks so what I like to do is um, put in the, the, bottom sh the bottom shock bolt first 
feed it through here, put the bottom one in, okay, and then to get the top one in, just press down a little bit, and you can see that it's not going up straight, or it's not going straight up, because uh, there's a little bit of a kink, um, I'm assuming, because it's all jacked up. So you just gotta take your hand and force it up there ever so gently and slightly, just twist it back and forth and let the shock absorb. Um, let the shock expand on its own. Okay. Okay. So I'm, I'm gonna be putting some thread lock on this nut here in just a little bit. All right, so let's go ahead and find a washer. So there should be a washer on the back side of this thing. I don't know where that went, so let me get another. And by the way, I'm using grade eight, grade eight washer. So if you guys got some lying around, I'd highly recommend always use grade eight nuts and bolts. See if I can. Yeah, it's, it's not gonna go straight in, so we need to tap it a little bit. Okay, so and then the trick here is get yourself a big screwdriver. Let's see what's going to work the best here. There it goes. Then a little bit of thread lock on the nut or the bolt. I should have put the thread lock on there before I shoved the bolt through there. But that's okay. And hopefully you got small hands because Getting your hands back here is extremely tight. And what I'm trying to do is just get the nut sort of squared on the bolt best I can. Because it's going to be very difficult to spin it on I'm doing it this way. <laughs> so if you guys have been working on cars long enough, you kind of know um, that you just, you're just trying to get that nut sitting on there just come on okay kind of square and then hopefully you can come in here with your socket or wrench and thread it on there by twisting the bolt Beautiful. Okay. And then put a little thread lock on this bolt on the back side, on the bottom of the shock bolt. And I got a breaker bar here to help you get it tightened up and that's about 55 foot pounds all right so that's all there is to it easy peasy lemon squeezy all right guys so we just got back test driving the Corvette on, out on the road and I tell you what uh, it drives like it's, it was brand new off the off the showroom. It just it purrs the suspension, the shocks. There's no more vibration. It was really bad. Like the windows rattled. Everything shook inside when you went over a small pothole. And now my dad's gonna be super impressed. All right. So hope you guys enjoyed this uh, short little video. Uh, now I well, I got the front end jacked up because I'm gonna be doing a transmission service. I'm gonna pull the pan off seals. 
uh, filter, all that good stuff. It's looking a little bit of fluid anyway, so it's a good time to just change out the whole thing. And I checked the dipstick and it was pretty brown. So we're gonna be replacing the transmission, transmission fluid on that. And if you guys wanna see a video on this, on this channel, on me doing this transmission service, leave a comment down below. All right, hope you guys enjoyed the video. And if you guys wanna see more stuff about the Corvette, let me know. I will post uh, more videos on all the things I've done in the past for this Corvette on my channel as well. Until then, God bless and be safe out there in the COVID world.